Hello, and once again I want to try something different. So I decided I want to go through the plug and plays I collected over the years. And you might be wondering, what is a plug and play? Well, during the 2000s, a company called Jack Specific, for the most part, pioneered this toy line where instead of saying buying a video game for a console, you could get a game built inside some sort of cool shell, and to start it, all you would need is usually four AA batteries and plug it into an AV port on your TV, and off you go. For the most part, the games are fun for about 10 minutes, and overall they range from good to meh to terrible. To start off, I thought I would begin with the only one that's not a Jack specific plug and play that I own, and instead, it's a Radica plug and play. And guess what? It sucks. And you'd think, for the most part, how could you screw up Tetris? How could it be bad? Because, like, I love Tetris. And the reason why it's so bad is one, the music. You can tell visually it looks very bad and it's shaking a ton, so. Hurts the eyes. And. It's the control. The controller is a square block. And right now, we're just gonna be playing line Tetris because I have no clue what it's all about. I'm assuming you just try to get it under the line like a Tetris or something. I have no clue. Uh, anyways, the controller is just very, like, awkward to use and to spin. It's clearly not the way to play Tetris. And also, about this music, I, I don't think this is the Tetris theme. Like, I could be wrong, maybe this is, like, the true Tetris song. But listening to it, I don't think so. Line Tetris is just... yeah, it's whatever. To be fair, let's just see how normal Tetris is. Because the game modes don't even matter. And, as you can see, they kind of have the Tetris theme. It just sounds a bit sped up, but... Hey, it's there! I'd rather just play... The Game Boy version. That one's way better. It does have two player option, but the one I have does not want to cooperate. Like the second controller just won't work. And to be fair, I'm not sad by that because I would not want to play this game with a friend. And not only that, there's a game mode called Garbage Tetris, but I already know this game's garbage enough, so I don't care to find out what Garbage Tetris is like. For our first Jack specific plug and play, I decided to start with the worst one I own. And we're gonna start from the bottom to the top because why not? To start we have Vulture's Venture. And it's pretty boring because all you do is defend missiles and bombs thrown by a bald green bird. And it's, yeah, it's just so boring. Next, there's Escape from the Sewers. And all you do is trail through a maze forever finding bombs and shooting mutant lizards. And I did try to see what happens if you get all five bombs, but I ran out of time and I have no energy to start over because it's just such a boring game in my opinion, and it's the worst one in the plug and play. Thirdly, we have Venom's Vindication, and it's way too easy. All you have to do is punch civilians and make nets to catch Venom's bombs. And he does it very slowly, so you have a lot of time to prevent them. Then, there's Spider's Training, and all I have to say for this, it's just a boring whack-a-mole. Finally, we have Streets of the City, and it's okay, except to finish the stage, all you need to do is collect money, which is kind of dumb. But overall, this plug-and-play is just boring. It's not fun. <laughs> Here we have Mortal Kombat, which is pretty fun, but a heavy controller, and a bit uncomfortable since they decided to make the top similar to an arcade machine. It also has a port for a second player, but I have no clue how to set that up. Overall, it's a bit awkward to start out with since the control is a bit weird from normal ones out there to use, but it's pretty fun. I'm gonna be honest here, I don't know much about Star Wars, so I might just butcher some of the names of characters because I don't know much about the show, but overall for the plug and play, it's pretty fun. To start off, we have Utapau Chase, in my opinion the best one out of all of them, and it's pretty simple and they're very generous with the amount of metapods they give you. Your goal is to get to the end and fight a boss, but I noticed besides the first level boss, it's the same boss, but just with a different pattern. Besides that, the only big complaint I have 
is that sometimes when you die, you might spawn behind the wall that kills you, which will cause you to die once again. Next up, we have Droid Invasion, and it sucks. You move slowly, and all you do is deflect bullets. Thirdly, we have Cortiscan Attack. It's just a straightforward, decent flying around space and shooting things type game, with a huge ship to fight as a boss. And it's not bad, and it's just as fun as Utapau Chase. Fourthly on the list is Grievous Onslaught, and it's a crappy version of a game similar to Enter the Gungeon or Binding of Isaac. Finally, we have Gunship Battle, and I don't fully understand this one. I think all you do is pick up stormtroopers and drop them off at an enemy's base, or maybe your base, I'm not so sure, and to care less, since it's not a good game at all. And that's pretty much it for the Star Wars plug and play. Overall, it only has like two good games. With the Atari Paddle plug and play, it's what you'd expect. As games such as Breakout where you slide from side to side using a knob, or if you need to fire, you use the red button on the side like in Canyon Bomber. There's really not a lot to say about most of these games since they're just Atari games, but I will say for the most part they're all pretty fun. Casino you just played 21 and probably some other games but I was too lazy to screw around with the settings to change the gameplay of each one. Circus Atari is a weird version of Breakout. Demons to Diamonds, it's literally in the title. You shoot demons and they turn into diamonds. But don't shoot the pink ones because they'll turn into a skull and shoot back. Night Drivers, driving at night and it's not great and it's hard to see. Steeplechase, you're a horse at the bottom and you have to jump over bars. Street Racer, you're a street racer going against a street racer in a street race. Super Breakout is just Breakout but with extra bars. Video Olympics is just Pong. And finally we have Warlords, which sucks mainly because you have a better version at the section to the right, which features two non-Atari games, Pong, and the arcade version of Warlords. Next we have Pinball, and there's not a lot to say because it's Pinball. It's pretty fun. The game overall is what you'd expect, except the controller is pretty interesting. I like this controller because you have two options on how you want to hit the paddles. You got the two top buttons, and then you got the two center buttons that are shaped like a paddle. And the bottom button, which you slide down to eject the ball in the pinball machine at the start of the game. And of course, there's three genres of pinball. Paleolithane Pete, and it's pretty fun. Then Super Strike, which is, in my opinion, the best way to play pinball. And then there's Skate Scene Pinball, which to me is the weaker one out of the three and not as cool as the other two. Overall, it's a very interesting plug and play and super fun. But there's not a lot to say because it's just pinball. It's more fun to play than it is to watch it, I find. For the last plug and play, we have the first one I ever got, Pac-Man, and it's great. We have four Pac-Man games, and for the most part, they're pretty similar to one another. Pac-Man is just Pac-Man, enough said, but Pac-Man Plus is a sped up version of Pac-Man with the addition of Coke. pac and pal is some weird version of Pac-Man, almost being completely different from the original game. There's no pellets to eat, but random objects, and you have a friend too, I guess. Super Pac-Man is just like pac and pal minus the friend, and replaced by a pill that gives Pac-Man gigantism. For the non-Pac-Man games, there's Galaxian, which is pretty fun, but in my opinion, Galaga is better. There's Boss um, Ian, which has an actual voice in it, and it's pretty fun, but then there's Dig Dug, and let me just say, I love Dig Dug, especially for its tune which I really enjoy. Finally, there's new, probably not anymore, Rally X, where all you do is collect flags and hope that a maniac driver doesn't come out of nowhere and kill you. And with that, 
that's all my plug and plays I have so far, and overall they're pretty fun for about 10 minutes, then become boring. But it's fun to play them once in a while, as a time killer. And I would end the video here, but I just recently got a new one, and it's unlike any of the other ones I own since this one is a more recent one and uses HDMI, and it's called AT Games Legends Flashback Blast Space Invaders. Now go through it quickly. It's a pretty fun system with lots of cool games such as Burger Time and one of my favorite Atari games, Jungle Hunt. But after I bought it, I realized something. It's just random Atari games with a six button controller, which is stupid since Atari games only use one. And there's also a rewind feature and I have no clue why you would want to use it unless you want to get a higher score, but really doesn't matter. It's okay if you want to play Atari games in HD, which really doesn't change much on how it looks. And other than that, all I gotta say is thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.